All right, guys, um, we will be doing the first part of the radioactive dating game. So I put this in the information, but when you first get on here, you might have to hit keep or it might say, is this safe for your computer? This is a safe program. It's not going to cause any viruses. Um, but I just thought I'd walk through because I know in years past when people didn't finish in class, they weren't able to access it at home. So that's kind of what this is for. So bear with me. I'm looking up the instructions on my phone since I can't pull up two things at once here while I'm recording, okay? So the first part is all, gonna, like, all this is about, this is going with our notes, evidence on evolution. And we're going to kind of be able to date things and look at different scenarios. So I'm not going to give you the answers per se, but I'm going to show you how to do these steps where you'll be able to get the answer. Okay, so we're going to click on decay rates. Right now it's on half-life, so change it to decay rates right here. Select carbon-14, it's already selected. I'm using the graph, the estimated half-life for C14 is how many years? Okay, so use this graph here. Okay, and put in the number you need to estimate about what the half-life is for C14. So that's this number one right here. Okay, move the bucket slider all the way to the right. That's this right here. This will place 1,000 carbon-14 atoms onto the screen. Oh. Went ahead and started too soon. Okay, and then see what it does. It's going to show us our half life here. Okay, you'll click on the start stop button and um, we'll start to decay the carbon 14. You're going to stop the decay as you get close to one half life. Okay, use the step button to stop decay at one half life. All right, so let's start this over. We need to reset. Oh, Goodness. I'm just going to pull this over. Okay, so I'm going to pull it on the right, and then the goal is to stop it on the one half life the best that we can. Okay, and then this moves it over a little bit. Perfect. Okay, so this is looking at step four, question C. After one half life, how many carbon 14 atoms of the 1000 originally remain? So this is the number we're looking at here, okay? All right. Use the start, stop, and step buttons to reach two half-lives. Okay, so let's start it again. Now we're going to get two half-lives. Ooh, went a little bit too far. Let's try that again here. Okay, two half-lives. All right, so that is what fraction of the carbon-14 atoms present at one half-life remain at two half-lives? So look at D. D is how many are there? Okay, about that. Um, what fraction of atoms is present from one half-life to two half-lives? So you need to look back at your number for one half-life and put it over the number for two half-lives. Now I know we're not looking for a perfect num number here. Look at those two and, and tell us about how much. Like, okay, we're going to estimate here. What fraction, how much is the second half-life of the first half-life? So think how this number is close to this number. It should be an even uh, fraction. Okay, now we're moving on to E. We're going to do three half-lives here. Okay, that's pretty close. Here's our number here. Um, that's E. How many? So that's how many there are. And then same thing. Three. Um, what is the fraction here from three to two? So get your number here. This is our three. And put it over your two number. And then again, round it. It's pretty close. It should be... All these numbers should be pretty similar. It's about what? That's what it's asking for. Okay. Um, all right. We're going to repeat the steps A through E uh, using uranium 238. And then um, see what's going on here. Okay. So let's change it to uranium. We'll need to slide the bucket over. Estimated half life for uranium 238. So estimated. Okay, notice this is in years. So what should the half-life be? It's about right here. Okay, that's the first part of F. 
Okay, then we're going to stop it at one half-life and see how many we get. Okay, here's our uranium. That's how many we have at the half-life from 1,000. Okay, next part is what fraction of uranium-238 atoms present at one half-life remain after two half-lives? Okay, this is asking for a fraction here again, so we need to figure out the two half-lives. Okay, this is two. Put this number over what you got for one. And give me a fraction for that. Again, you're not going to be putting 269 over whatever um, 1 was, okay? It should be an estimate about how much is that. And we're going to do the same thing for 3 over 2 half-lives. Okay, so put this number over what 2 was, and again, give me a pretty even fraction. All right. Um, and then once you have all those numbers, you can, I know I went through that kind of fast, you can stop and replay whatever you need to um, to help you out there. But the last part is based on the results of 4A to 4F, explain the meaning of the word half-life in one sentence. So look at what we've gotten for all these numbers. Your, guys, your fractions should all be the same, so double check that. Um, anytime it asks for a fraction, it should be the same for every answer, okay? We're not getting specific numbers like 142 over 262 around that okay how much is that about um, and then if you're still struggling look up the word half-life okay and that will maybe help you look at your answers okay so that's it for part one um, I'm gonna be doing a little video for each part for you to go back and take a look if you want to move on to the other parts within the instructions go for it part one and part two are a little bit shorter and then part three takes a little bit longer so that's what we'll be doing on Friday okay uh, rest of the time go ahead and work on your activity one